I feel like every guitar player out there needs to know the story of Robert Johnson, and most importantly, why he made a deal with the devil. So the story goes in the 1930s, a novice guitar player named Robert Johnson went down to the crossroads at midnight to meet the devil. He hands him his guitar, the devil tunes his guitar, the devil hands it back, and Robert accepts it. And at that moment, Robert Johnson becomes the greatest blues guitar player of all time. Now did that really happen? Well, let's find out. What's very interesting is we really don't know much about Robert Johnson. His whole life is a bit of a mystery. In fact, there's only two known pictures of Robert. Now let's back up a bit. Robert Johnson was born May 11th, 1911 in Hazelhurst, Mississippi. He never really had a stable home life and was always on the move. Growing up in the Mississippi Delta in the early 1900s, his stepfather was a sharecropper and instead of working in the fields, all Robert wanted to do was play and listen to music. You see, Robert Johnson had an immense passion for music and the blues, and it pretty much took priority in his life. Then, in 1929, Robert marries Virginia Travis. Virginia becomes pregnant. Then Robert takes a job in the fields to support his family. Then in 1930, Virginia and the baby tragically die while during childbirth. And at that very breaking point, he decides to turn his back on religion, on life, on everything and dedicate the rest of his life to music. Now in Mississippi in the 1930s, there was these places called juke joints, where local blues players would come and show off their skills. People would drink whiskey, they would dance, listen to the blues, and just forget about all the bad stuff going on in their lives. It's also where the workers would head after a long day of working in the fields and relax and just hang out. So Robert would go to these juke joints and listen to musicians like Sun House and Willie Brown, who were some of the local blues guitar players. These two players were like mentors to Robert Johnson, and in interviews later they described him as a novice guitar player when they first met him. Robert would go to juke joints, listen, and even perform, but he didn't stand out from the rest. Now he was good, but he wasn't the best. Now here's where it gets really interesting. After playing with Sun House and Willie Brown, he disappears, he just vanishes for like six months to a year-ish. Some say he went to Arkansas looking for his father, but he doesn't really say where he goes, he just poof, he's gone. Then one night at a juke joint in Banks, Mississippi, guess who comes through the door? It's Robert with a seven string guitar. Everybody's like, when he started playing, everyone stopped and listened. The sound he was creating with the seven string guitar wasn't like anything the people had heard before. People there that night said it was like he was playing the piano. It was like he had more than one instrument. It was like a full on blues orchestra. The slides, the bends, the rhythm, the melodies, it was from another world. Everyone at the juke joint was blown away. But here's the question that was on everybody's mind. How did he get that good that fast? So the story goes, Robert Johnson made a deal with the devil. He goes down to the crossroads to meet the devil. Got down on his knees, hands the devil his guitar, the devil tunes it and then gives it back. The legend states that if you accept the guitar back, you are given the gift in return for your soul. Robert accepts it. Now there is another take on what happened when Robert leaves for that portion of time. And that's that Robert met an unbelievably talented guitarist who wasn't very well known a man by the name of Ike Zimmerman, who took Robert under his wing and taught him a bunch of stuff. It's said that Robert and Ike would play for hours at night, sitting on gravestones at a nearby cemetery because no one would hear it. Apparently they were kicked out of playing at Ike's house because it kept his wife and his kids up. I know how that can be. Now, do you think Robert sold his soul to the devil? Or do you think he was just jamming and learning things from Ike, sitting on gravestones and trying to wake the dead? Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear what you think. Now, fellow blues players at the time say Robert was always traveling. He was always moving around, sharing his music with the world. He started attempting to learn all different types of styles of music that he would play on his guitar. Not just blues, but world music, jazz, Irish music, European music, Spanish music, you name it, everything. And his fellow musicians said he could play anything extremely well. I guess he looked at it as more tools for his toolbox. What a lot of people don't know is Robert Johnson was also an amazing harmonica player, which came in handy when he was traveling around. In 1936 and in 1937, Robert went to Texas to record under a deal with the American Record Corporation, and the tracks were produced by a producer named Don Law. The sound Robert would record was so different from others 
because he would literally move the microphone into the corner of the room, face the wall, and sing, creating a distinct, unique sound when recorded. The vocals on the tracks almost sound haunting. You can totally hear the difference. Robert recorded a total of 29 songs in those two recording sessions in 1936 and 1937, which are the only tracks we have today. Don would post local talent up like Robert with room and board at a boarding house in the area while they were in the midst of recording. Sometimes though, Robert could be a little bit of a handful, getting into fights, drinking, and also womanizing. As time went on, these things were things that Robert would struggle with, especially being out there on the road. And to some, the blues is considered to be the works of the devil. So blues guitarists in some instances were looked down upon for playing the music of the devil. Robert traveled up to New York, he traveled over to Chicago, to St. Louis, all over sharing his music with the world. And Robert really started to create a name for himself. He would never stay in one place too long. He'd travel, always. He loved to play, he was an amazing musician, and he also loved to drink, and he loved his women. He was always traveling, and some say, he was searching for his freedom. Now one night in August of 1938, Robert was playing at a juke joint in Greenwood, Mississippi called Three Forks. That night Johnson couldn't help himself but to flirt with a married woman. The story goes the husband found out and decided to send a bottle of poison whiskey via a waitress to Johnson. Johnson drank the whiskey and became very ill. Johnson's friends described Johnson in severe pain and agony which lasted up until he passed away a few days later. No one was ever charged in Robert Johnson's murder. Robert Johnson died on August 16th, 1938, at the young age of 27 years old, along with many other famous, brilliant, talented musicians, such as Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison, Amy Winehouse, and many more. Some say that that was Robert paying his dues to the devil, the curse of 27 and musicians. So many have died so young. Do you think they also made deals with the devil? Such a tremendous loss. After his death, little by little, his influence started popping up in B.B. King, Muddy Waters, The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, Eric Clapton, all of these artists and thousands more were greatly influenced by Robert Johnson's music. The amount of famous bands, guitarists, musicians you can trace back in the influences of Robert Johnson are absolutely insane. That is the story of Robert Johnson, a brilliant blues guitar player who was just taken too soon. All guitar players need to understand the story of Robert Johnson and how important it is because it's influenced everything that you want to learn in one form or another. And his story is so supernatural, it's so eerie. I mean, did he really sell his soul to the devil to be the best guitar player around? We may never know the truth. You guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for hearing the tale of Robert Johnson, the greatest blues guitar player of all time. And um, who do you want to learn about next? I'd love to tell their story. Leave it in the comments below. And most of all, guys, keep rocking. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.